Hi, China Today is a series which I delivered to uh, the USD of Third Age, UVA, uh, in the 2015. The original delivery is in English, but I made several um, versions of it in Cantonese. So this is uh, the updates for the China Today series. In the as the number one, uh, as the first lecture, I would like to uh, talk about the political environment of China today. Okay, we have a picture here, and on the after the guy on the right side, uh, Chinese achieved a an economic miracle. Now, since Mao died in 1976, his death enabled uh, the stopping of the Cultural Revolution, which lasted 10 years. And then when Deng Xiaoping grabbed the power, and he initiated a policy of reform. So the most important thing about uh, Deng Xiaoping is his uh, practical uh, approach to problems, as noted here. Don't care about if a cat is white or black. A mice catching cat is a good cat. So forget about ideology. Let's be pragmatic. That is the message. And since uh, Deng Xiaoping's reform, the growth of China is um, obvious to everybody looking. So, and the other important thing is let somebody, uh, some uh, become rich first. So, let's look at the gross domestic product between 1952 to 2005. Obviously, I haven't updated to, to 2015, so there's a 10 year lead. lead. Uh, we noticed that until the opening in 1996, the growth, if any, of the Chinese GDP is minimal. But since the opening, and especially after the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone, the rise of China's GDP is spectacular. By 2015, the uh, Chinese GDP exceeds 10 trillion US dollars. At the moment, China is the world's trading partners to many, many different nations. Uh, importantly, we should know that there is, uh, Hong Kong is number two there. Well, Hong Kong the, uh, mainly is a, a we export, uh, we call it country or city. It, Make them therefore a lot of goods pass through Hong Kong and eventually be sold to the rest of the world. And because of statistical reason, we can't see that, uh, see the distribution of the Hong Kong uh, re exports. But anyway, uh, from this, we noticed that uh, China is the largest trading partner to many, many different countries. Here are two, two maps. One map is about the Countries export status nation. That means we want to look at the pink one. For example, Australia, Mongolia, they are pink. That means their major export is to China. In the other um, diagram here, we look at again the pink areas, it, which is the export from China, or China is their major import, which includes United States almost the whole Europe, and a little bit of Africa. Before we continue, I would like to look at two more countries. First of all, uh, let's look at the previous uh, USSR, uh, which uh, when it opened up, changed from USSR into Russia. So during the 1997 to 1998, the GDP actually declines. But since Putin is in place, then its GDP rises up again. Another comparison is uh, between India and China. The reason I choose these two countries is first of all, uh, USSR and China, both of these countries uh, make a change from the ruling parties. So it is a Auto, autonomous uh, change of policy. Um, the for India, uh, they are about the same size. They are both consist of billions, a bit over a billion um, uh, citizens. 
So they are large countries. Before the Chinese uh, opening, India is actually slightly better than China. Yes, and then from that onward, India have its GDP improved quite significantly, but compared to China, there's a big gap there, and the gap is getting bigger and bigger. So the obvious question is, what has the Chinese done right? Why Chinese have this remarkable transformation? Well, from a cursory look, we notice that um, Chinese use a gradual removal of market inefficiencies. Uh, it liberated the excess labor in the agricultural sector and let these people go to the uh, coastal regions, the factory in the coastal regions, and provide and becomes the world's largest uh, producing country through the um, tapping of this uh, low cost, uh, low wages uh, workforce. Another interesting thing a lot of people might not have noticed is that the Chinese actually do test before full scale um, implementation. For example, the special economic zone is in Shenzhen, and it has been restricted to Shenzhen for quite some time until they notice that something is actually developing very fast. Then it extends to Shanghai, and then eventually, now I think there is about five um, different special economic zones. Chinese also exert a very tight control of the currency. For a very long time, there is a something called um, uh, foreign currency exchange certificates. So if you are buying things using these foreign currency exchange certificates, you usually get it cheaper because to them, uh, foreign exchange is important. So for a long time, Chinese has been have a tight control on its currency. Yes, there are several uh, state-owned enterprises which are gradually changing to private hands, but it is important also to note that there is still a quite a number of very large uh, state-owned enterprises. The whole development of the Chinese government is on infrastructure, which everybody will notice, including the airports, the high-speed rail, and so forth. So this is what the Chinese have done. Is that right or not? It is up to us to um, think about it. So let me also quote a few other uh, polit political scientists. For example, Francis Fukuyama. He noticed that China was a sophisticated modern day dating back to the 3rd century BC. That is about the time of the Qing, Dan uh, Qing Dynasty in China, the first emperor. What the first emperor do is instead of giving his uh, relatives, his uh, family members, uh, pieces of land and becomes a fertile system, he's concentrated all his uh, power within the central government. So the gov the whole China is actually run by a by large uh, bureaucracy. So that is uh, what uh, Francis Fukuyama referred to. It is uh, a objective. Uh, rational, bureaucratic, and impersonal uh, modern state. Another important uh, notice uh, Francis have put in is also that uh, Chinese follow a very strong Confucius tradition, and uh, even to today. For another, another social scientist, Peter Kassenstein, he noted that the Chinese government is a system of so-called directed improvisations, uh, basically meaning that the, when there's a problem, then the Chinese government finds a solution. So there is not much of a long-term plan. Is that the case? Well, the Chinese have a so-called five-year plan strategy. So at the moment, it is in its 12th um, five-year plan. China also joined the WTO, the World Trade Organization, in 2001, and there is a very rapid industrialization. Um, Eric Li, an a entre entrepreneur in China, once said that the Chinese government has run the best human resource department. This is another um, Chinese scholar, uh, Zhang Weiwei. Uh, Professor John, uh, Professor Jian, uh, point out 
the four important elements of the Chinese development. Number one, uh, practical and test. So it is always testing things out before full-scale implementation. The Chinese government, unlike the USSR, when it changed over from a Soviet uh, situation into a modern state, the, weak, the government is very weak. Instead, China maintained a very strong government throughout over the reform and opening. Uh, Chinese put a lot of effort in the stabilizations of the, of the country. And the purpose is not to give people uh, free, free freedom, but give people good life. The change is gradually, and you look at it from a long-term perspective, we notice that actually China is uh, an orderly uh, opening, or usually tackling the easier things first. The economy today is a mixed economy, meaning there are free markets as well as strong uh, state-owned enterprise. Obviously, the open policy means open to the world, so China is trying to uh, get in line with the world uh, policies. Until the present uh, President Xi Jinping, the Chinese foreign policy has been uh, almost given by uh, Deng Xiaoping. Deng Xiaoping famously have uh, say five different strategy. The first is stay, uh, stay calm, have a calm observation, look at look, look at the things around and hold your ground if you something involve a national interest don't give uh, don't give uh, up uh, deal with things calmly keep a very low profile and make a difference the make a difference here refers to make a difference within china it's not make a difference within the world so this um not a very tall guy actually uh, help china opens so let's let's quote some of the Deng Xiaoping's own uh, words. Uh, the upper part of the, if you can read Chinese, then this is what Deng Xiaoping actually said, but I have a translation uh, in, the, in the bottom. If there's anything wrong with the translation, it is my fault. So in 1989, in December, Deng Xiaoping to some of the members of the uh, Chinese uh, Central Committee, especially about the foreign affairs, saying that in short, the international situation is summed up in three sentences. The first sentence, calm observation. The second sentence, hold our ground. And the third sentence, deal it calmly with. No need to worry. It cannot be hurried. Keep calm, 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 calm again. Do the hard work. Do one thing right. Our own thing. So the, the make a difference, meaning make a difference to the life of Chinese. So that is uh, referring to in this last sentence. In 1990, again, December, Deng Xiaoping spoke to several um, his comrades in charge of the Central Committee. Uh, there are some countries in the third world which hope that uh, Chinese will need, but we shouldn't. Uh, this is a fundamental national policy. We do not afford uh, the strength we don't have the string yet, and there's no benefit in leading the world. We shall lose the initiative. China should always stand on the side of the third world. China will never seek handgut money. Uh, China will never take the lead, but nothing is impossible in the international issues. Uh, we shall make a difference. For what I think, we should actively promote the establishment of a new international political and economic order. We are not afraid of anyone, but we shall not offend anyone. Grab the five principles, work, and stand firm. So here he make reference to a new international political and economic order. Until Xi Jinping, we don't see a lot of this and uh, a new establishment of a new international political and uh, economic order. But um, in the next two lectures, I will explain. Uh, what is this new international political order or economic order is. In 1992, April 28th, when Deng Xiaoping was discussing the development issue, he also repeated the same message. We are keeping a low profile and do some more years to really form a larger political force. Then China can have a larger say at the international affairs. So that is what uh, the Chinese have been doing 
for the past uh, 30 years. Keep a low profile, concentrate on development within China, and then um, try to not make any noise about anything. Just move along, keep a low profile. Then China becomes the largest trading partner, and Obama have this so-called uh, Pacific focus. So let's look at what is this uh, meant to China. Uh, in the middle, we put uh, Beijing at the center of the circle. So again, this is not a map from me. I'm I get it from online. Why right next to Beijing on the right is um, Korea. We know that uh, U.S. Army has. Uh, U.S. Navy, or better say, uh, U.S. military has a presence in North Korea as well as Japan. Going down, then we have the Senkatu or Daoyu Island. Daoyu Island is actually the name the, the Chinese call these islands. Next to these uh, Daoyu Islands is the Taiwan. Again, we know that Taiwan is uh, under the uh, military umbrella of the United States. Then under Lower than that, we have the Philippines. Then turning around, then on the uh, lower end, we have the Vietnam, uh, which the U.S. is also trying to sell um, naval ships, etc., to the Vietnam uh, government. So basically, you look at this uh, this picture, you understand that the China's seaboard is basically under the control of the United States. So. That is the, one of the China's uh, current uh, problems. I will say Chinese have uh, several problems uh, to deal with. First of all, it is it holds the, almost the largest fraction of the United States overseas government bonds. Uh, when I wrote this uh, slide, it, China is still the largest, but now today uh, China is second of, uh, after Japan. All the sea routes are under the USA control, and unfortunately, US a views China as a potential uh, enemy. So the question is, if you were the Chinese leader, what would you do? The current um, president, Xi Jinping, the answer is one belt, one row. What, do, what does that mean by one belt, one row? Okay. One belt means the re-establishment of the old silk row, the land-based old silk row. And then the the other one one role is the establishment of a maritime uh, connections from China to um, Europe. Looking at what is here, we have the um, green curves, green lines, which is the traditional or historical routes, and we have the red lines, which the uh, Xi Jinping want to build. So we will talk about that more in the future lectures. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.